What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Nigel that is currently continuing to make that turn. It is moving northeast as of right now. We have this area of interest off the coast of the Bahamas right now. We have some showers and thunderstorms starting to gradually organize and develop as we speak. And we have in uh, this new area of interest that has just entered the main development region last night. It is now in the Atlantic Basin, and the conditions are expected to continue to improve day by day. And we're going to go ahead and show you the forecast that we're looking at because there's been a lot of trends in the models that have been pretty concerning to me. I was talking with Weather Center Nazario last night, and the uh, Zero Z uh, models shifted considerably more than they uh, than I'm comfortable with. So we'll go ahead and show you that as time continues to go on. But first, we're going to go ahead and show you what we have for Nigel, this area of interest, and this area of interest right here. We'll briefly talk about Nigel. It is starting its weakening trend. It is now a 90 mile per hour hurricane high end category one pressure of 975 millibars. It is moving north at 18 miles per hour, although the movement has been more north uh, northeast than north as of right now. Its current location is 36.1 degrees north, 54.4 degrees west. And I need to point out very quickly that this hurricane has been moving a lot faster than we originally anticipated that it would. We were expecting it to make that we were expecting to, it to make that and complete that turn basically by tonight. However, based off of what I'm seeing on satellite imagery, it looks like it already did that over the last couple of hours. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on it. It's expected to remain a hurricane until tomorrow evening, then become a post tropical or extra tropical cyclone. And then kind of stall off the coast, uh, stall in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean right here, kind of off the coast of Iceland and Greenland over here. We'll have to pay attention to it to see what kind of impacts this thing could definitely bring, especially if this thing gets a lot larger as some models have been anticipating it to be. Discussion. Once again, has this weakening gradually and then weakening at a pretty quick and robust pace. So Nigel looks like it's beginning the beginning of the end for Hurricane Nigel right here. It peaked at a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 100 miles per hour. However, it was moving too fast to take advantage of the, war of the warm waters and weaker wind shear. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is this d disturbance right here that is off the coast of the Carolinas and Georgia now. Here's what we have. A non-tropical area of low pressure is expected to form east of the Florida Peninsula this week. This system could acquire some subtropical characteristics by this weekend while gradually moving uh, generally northward. Regardless of development, this low is likely to bring gusty winds to gale force, heavy rain, and high surf to portions of the southeast and mid-Atlantic, the United um, Atlantic United States late this week and into the weekend. Additional information on this system can be found at the N NWS. Okay, 30% chance of formation in the next seven days once again so this is a potential wind and flooding threat that we'll have to pay attention in areas like south carolina north carolina virginia potentially maryland delaware washington dc all the way up to new york city and parts of new england as we've been seeing with some models so we'll have to keep an eye on it as this is a potential threat for now that this is the main story i want to talk about because a lot of new models have come in that are pretty interesting to say at the very least we kind of alluded to it earlier so here's what we have a tropical wave is currently located just off the west coast of, a, of Africa. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for gradual development, and a tropical depression is likely to form late this week or this weekend while it moves generally westward at 10 to 15 miles per hour across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. 10% chance of formation now in the next 48 hours. It has been tagged. It is now out in the Atlantic Ocean. It is off the coast of Africa, and the formation chance in the next seven days is still at 70%. That's going to probably hold there at least for the next day or so as this thing continues to gradually organize and develop in the main development region. Already has a pretty decent start. It's a n nice, uh, healthy tropical wave so far. It's in a relatively low sheared environment as of right now. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to go on. The ITCZ is also firing up quite a bit as well. So we'll see. have to see how that interacts. But now we're going to go ahead and show you some of the model runs I was talking to you about. And we're going to go ahead and start with the European model. The European has Nigel moving off uh, to sea right here. And then it has this high pressure system building back up. Meanwhile, the subtropical ridge starts to gradually organize and develop, brings impacts to the Carolinas, parts of Virginia, especially Virginia Beach, the Delmarva Peninsula, and parts of Maryland, including Washington, D.C. And then brings some potentially heavy, heavy rain to Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, just off the coast of Maine, right there. And the Europeans actually forecasting this to stay completely out to sea as of right now, which 
is a pretty interesting forecast considering what's going on. But meanwhile, the European uh, uh, has this this wave over here. It has it still moving uh, has it still moving north of the Antilles, but it is a bit of a weaker system. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm not sure if wind shear, according to the European, is tr is trying to chip at it right now. It appears that it appears that there's not really that uh, that much wind shear. There is a bit of outflow with it for sure, but there is yeah. But we'll have to keep an eye on it. It looks like the storm, according to this, I don't know, maybe running into some dry air or something, or like that. Yeah, it's according to the European, there is a bit of dry air which is potentially going to limit its development. But it hasn't really limited the development of much systems as of right now. So we'll have to keep an eye and see what's going on with the European model. But meanwhile, the GFS has not stopped. The GFS has really ramped up its base, uh, basically its uh, scenarios right here. And this is corroborated with potentially the CMC, the Icon, potentially the Navgem down the road. So we'll have to keep an eye on all those models right there. And here's what the GFS has. The GFS doesn't have this thing really organizing and developing until it gets closer to the Lesser Antilles, but when it does, it intensifies at a very quick pace, gets down to a 968 millibar Category 2 hurricane before impacting the Lesser Antilles. Um, I'm not, uh, yeah, which is south of Guadalupe. I think that's Dom I think that's Dominica uh, and some other islands over there. I'll have to keep an eye on it for you guys right there. Uh, any way, any way in the, uh, sorry, any island in the Lesser Antilles could get serious impacts with this. But this is where things get interesting. Once this enters the Caribbean, it's going to be moving through a lot warm, uh, warmer water and a lot more ocean heat content, and it's expected to quickly intensify down to a 949 millibar system before making a close pass to Haiti and then making landfall on Jamaica as either a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane, but then it enters the jugular which we are seeing OHC values in the Western Caribbean of potentially over 200 ocean heat content. Waters of over 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degrees Fahrenheit in the United States. And the GFS has this thing really rapidly intensifying and deepening down to a 926 millibar Category 5 hurricane in this part of the Caribbean. Keep in mind, by the time this scenario plays out at this point, this is 13 days out. So we don't know exactly for sure if this will play out the same way that the GFS is calling for it. But the GFS does have this thing then entering the Gulf of Mexico and then approaching the Alabama-Florida border, according to the GFS right here. We really don't know anything uh, out uh, more than seven days from the uh, from the uh, from this model run right here. What we do know is that the Lesser Antilles, based on other modeling we have been seeing, could see some sort of big impact from this. So here's the GFS. Next one we're showing you is the CMC model right here. Here's the CMC. The CMC has this as a more of a weaker storm. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it does have it approaching and entering the Lesser Antilles, making landfall near Guadalupe and Dominica, and then entering the Caribbean Sea as probably a dis as apparently a disorganized mess or something like that. But before making Haiti, uh, hitting Haiti, and then Cuba, and then starting to drift out into the Atlantic over there. I'm not 100% sure what the intensity is going to be, but the track does uh, the track from the CMC does seem to be in agreement to some extent with the GFS. So here's what we have with the Navgem. As this thing gradually starting to organize and develop as it's approaching the Antilles, it's not really registering anything on the Navgem, so it, it might take some time for that to happen, but we will definitely keep an eye on it as this is a potential threat at this point. This is on my threat list at this point. And as we go ahead and show you the icon right here, Similar situation, gradual organization and development until it approaches the Lesser Antilles and it enters better conditions. And the icon at this point, 180 hours out, has a 1,002 millibar system, uh, system tropical storm that could get a lot stronger as it's approaching the ocean, a huge amount of OHC, a lot of warm waters especially. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to progress. This is a basically on my watch list for potential threats at this point. I know this whole thing is out right now in the eastern Atlantic right now, but based off of at least four of the five models, the track has this approaching the Lesser Antilles, and based off of the, all four of those five models, this high-pressure system, the Bermuda High, starts to rebuild, and it kind of just stays there while, this, while these storms move through and impact uh, the Antilles. So it's not going to be like Lee or Nigel where the where the high pressure ridge just started gradually weakening and this thing turned out to sea. It doesn't look like it's going to be happening come late September at this time around. So this is definitely something we need to monitor as time continues to go on and we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're going to go ahead and next show you the conditions that this all this stuff has to work with. We were talking about this a little bit earlier in the video, but here's the conditions that this area of interest has to work with. 
for the most of the main development region, 28 plus degrees Celsius water. So that's pretty good, a uh, pretty good start for it. But once it approaches the Lesser Antilles, that's where these conditions start to improve. We're seeing areas of 30 plus degrees Celsius waters, pretty much from uh, pretty much from here all the way until the Antil uh, into the Antilles, and then even further into the Caribbean. Most of the Caribbean is over 30 plus degrees Celsius because a lot of these waters have been very untapped from this hurricane season. Yes, we had Adalia that kind of formed in this part of the Caribbean, but it really didn't do too much to the ocean heat content. It took some of it and then head to Florida as a Category 3 hurricane at landfall, but this time around, if this could track continues, moves towards the Antilles, 30 plus degrees Celsius, also an insane amount of ocean heat content really starts to pick up across this part of the MDR. We're starting to see a lot more areas of 150 plus OHC just west of the Antilles right here. So if it enters near Guadalupe and Dominica, this thing will have no trouble intensifying once this thing approach enters the Caribbean Sea. And then, especially in the MDR, conditions do continue to improve. The models are reflecting on this. They're showing gradual organization and development until about this point right here, about, uh, about 48 degrees west. So... That's when the OHC really starts to have a massive uptick, and that's when the conditions improve. If we go ahead and show you the wind shear right here based off of the latest uh, shear forecast as, as of right now, shear in this part of the MDR isn't the best if this were to happen today, but this is expected to fluctuate as time continues to go on. The shear in the Caribbean is expected to fluctuate as time continues to go on. So if so, that's what we have going on. But what we need to pay attention to is the Eastern Atlantic, and in the environment it is, is it is in right now, it's in a relatively low uh, shear pocket as of right now. This is something we definitely need to pay very very close attention to as time continues to progress. Because if we go ahead and show you, if we go ahead and briefly show you the shear forecast based off of what I'm seeing right here, uh, based off what I'm seeing right here, the shear forecast. It does, in this part of the MDR, weaken considerably by the time this thing uh, gets uh, to that point. And it's going to fluctuate off and on, off and on. But if this thing can move, if this thing moves south enough and the shear weakens a little bit more, things are going to get very, very interesting. And for those of you who are watching the Antilles, I would continue to monitor this situation as time continues to progress. And we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.